Hello everyone, it's Justin Dawson and uh, back from Infocom 2025. Were you over there? Did you miss out? Well, if you are listening to this program, I always recommend that you view the YouTube channel uh, for All Things Techie podcast. It makes more sense as we were over in Orlando doing the trade show floors and interviewing a lot of people. These episodes are sponsored by Vizor T and Nareva, who sponsor the All Things Techie podcast at Infocom 2025. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. And we hope you like the programmes. Welcome along once again to the All Things Techie podcast, sponsored by Nareva and Vizor T. But it's great to be at Nareva's booth because Nareva have been doing some wonderful things. Rob, you were over in Dublin. Yeah. We talked about the issues that we have on campus, you know, with big lecture theatres, being able to do things um, with Zoom, where we just have terrible echo loops. Yeah. We have old style buildings and um, that need the big overhaul and then you let me in a little NDA secret that I was like oh my god this is going to revolutionize things and I'm not paid to say this because the new brand new HDX system behind us I got a demo of this earlier on but um, since last year and with uh, Vegas and seeing Nareva's bars and now we're gone about 10 steps along the, the journey with the HDX model. So talk me through this, like what, what have we got here behind us? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, a lot to unpack there. So yeah, I would say first of all, yeah, visiting you at the DCU, it's, it's all about listening to the customers and what are the challenges in classrooms, uh, large lecture halls, and of course, corporate customers as well, but we'll focus on uh, yeah. higher ed here. And uh, and yeah, so we, we basically uh, kind of went out and said, uh, our products that we have, the HDL series, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, really good for in small classrooms for for meeting rooms but what about the bigger spaces and how can you have really good engaging experiences in those so yes. kind of out of that came uh, the HDX which is what's behind me and so it's a it's a new series we're extending our portfolio mm -hmm. uh, we're not you know the HDL line is not going away it's about more choice more options and for the our nice customers. thing it's for listeners and viewers that don't know about your your other bars is it is a sound and speaker bar all in one using what you call microphone mist technology. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, so it means that you walk into the room and you don't need to worry about microphones and speakers in the room. You don't have to hold a handheld. You don't have to, like you have the voice amplification, the whole, it's, it's all in one. Yeah, it's, exactly, yeah. So yeah, the core of our offering is microphone mist technology. It fills the room with virtual microphones, uh, full like corner to corner microphone pickup. No matter what size or what square, shape room you have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, today we go up to uh, 35 feet by 55 feet. Uh, with the new HDX, we'll go even bigger, mm -hmm. uh, bigger spaces. But the HDX is really about, and you can again see it here uh, uh, behind us, it's all about uh, uh, extending to all audio use cases. Yes. So it's a, a modular solution. So you have audio bars. Uh, in this oh, audio bar, yeah. yeah, you see it. In the, in the audio bar, the bottom uh, portion is for, uh, is the speakers. is a two-way speaker system with drivers and, and a tweeter. The top portion is microphones. It's a 2D microphone array. And the center is, is our feedback and kind of interaction zone to let the users know, you know, the status of the system. Uh, but but with this, the, of course, this, of course, this circle can be dialed down. Like it can yeah. be the dot that you have in the center yeah. and a couple of different colors as well. Yeah, yeah, it's all about user preference and whether you want a kind of very visual UI uh, or you want it really to disappear and, and, and blend into the background. So you you have the audio bar is one uh, one element. You have a microphone pod, uh, which is a new a new element from from Nareva. This looks like a small little Wi-Fi receiver exactly. on on the top. Like you put this in any ceiling, you it's going to be quite hidden. Yeah, exactly. That's the the exact metaphor. It's it's something that is light enough to clip to a T-bar. Uh, and be above the talker. Really, the job of the pod is for for voice lift, mm -hmm. for more localized uh, pickup uh, of a talker. Yeah. Now you you mentioned something there, like a T bar. If you wanted this portable, you can have a portable on stand. You you were talking about it earlier on. Yes. It's like a sixty dollar stand that you put it on, and it's it, it works. And yeah. the great thing is when you connect everything up to the hub, 
at the bottom here, it does it all its algorithms in the yeah. background. You don't need to worry about it. It just does it in the background and it's ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Another foundational piece of microphone mist is continuous auto calibration. Yes. yes. And so, yeah, you put the, these four uh, buyers in a room. They're aware of each other. Uh, they're aware of the space. They'll auto calibrate, tune the EQ, uh, tune uh, and create a unified coverage map uh, without user intervention. This just happens. This is what we call the system hub. It's really the brains of the system. And so each of these uh, components, the, the bars uh, and the, the pods, connect uh, via power over Ethernet uh, to this, this central hub. So uh, uh, data and power over a single Ethernet cable, so as simple as you can make it. Uh, we have uh, kind of professional grade analog inputs and outputs, so you can add things like wireless microphones or additional speakers. We have an additional subwoofer uh, port, so really we're serious about audio quality. So the system does uh, full fidelity sound uh, from uh, 120 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Uh, with a subwoofer, you can go down to the lower ranges. Really nice and loud, full system, uh, uh, 80 dB of sound anywhere in the room. Uh, back to the hub, uh, USB, that's uh, connecting to your compute, your MTR, etc. Two network ports, one for your local uh, LAN, so your camera connections or a Dante. Uh, the other uh, goes to console direct to the cloud for uh, remote device management or monitoring. And we also have a Bluetooth uh, module. This is the Bluetooth antenna uh, here. And so we're using Bluetooth for direct connection of our app. So just like your consumer experience at home, your Sonos experience as an example, you can walk up as an integrator or an IT manager, uh, uh, AV manager uh, like yourself, just pair to this hub, tune it without needing to get on the network. Uh, we also use Bluetooth for a remote and for streaming. Uh, a couple of things that like really came up earlier on uh, when we were talking is about the next step. It's like you can daisy chain these for two rooms that might have a partition wall in, in it. So you can then go to the app and pick and choose which one of the speakers and microphones you want on or off and it then does the algorithm all over again. That's right, yeah. So the, we've built divisible room support uh, yeah, natively. Divisible room, that's yeah. the words I would look for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. D different but words, combinable divisible rooms. It's natively built into our system hub. So you can daisy chain two of these hubs together mm -hmm. and set up and use the app, as you said, to configure what do you want the big combined room, uh, what components do you want to use there, and when they're separated, what components. And then you basically have the two room profiles that you can switch via the app, or probably even more conveniently, through an API call. So and that's, you, yeah. and that's a key thing. With the API call, no matter what touch panels or control you're yes. using, you can just have simple buttons on and off, or hidden in the background for your AV yeah. manager to just turn on and off the rooms, depending on which way they are configured. Yeah, exactly. And we'll, we'll uh, know that the room was divided or combined, and we can trigger an auto calibration so the acoustic performance in the bigger or smaller space is is ready to go. And I think what's key is like, you have two rooms that can do this divisible, you're looking at more rooms as well. Like this is this is the future expansion of Narego all the time. Yeah. One thing that really stands out and I think is so important like going forward is, I think, and I'm gonna say it openly on the podcast, T-Loop is a thing of the past, Aurora Cast is the future. Yeah. Being able to give, whether it be a student or someone in the room, the ability to just go to their, a phone, bring yeah. your own device, use your Bluetooth headphones, you're listening to the room. And yeah. I was just talking to some of your colleagues earlier, like yeah. the, the distance that they were getting even yeah. outside of the room. Now, of yeah. course, you can put security features on there, I'm sure. Yeah. But it's the fact that there's unlimited amount of assistive listening with the Auracast built into this device. That's right, yeah. So built into the system hub is Auracast. We say that differently, that might be a... Yeah. Uh, uh, an Irish versus a Canadian thing, yeah. but uh, with with the Oracast, which is a blue tech te technology, uh, one to many yeah. uh, broadcast, as yeah. you said. So basically, in a higher ed scenario, the instructor is, is speaking. We can broadcast simultaneously uh, an Oracast uh, uh, channel. The students can subscribe to it, as you said, with their hearable, listen in, and if they're hearing challenged, they could be using their their hearing aid. Mm -hmm. And again, what what people don't want to do is really self-identify. Exactly. I have a hearing challenge or, exactly. you know, even when in anything, you just want to kind of be subtle and, and be included in the, in the conversation. But like we discussed earlier on, 
that like even with students in a room, and I know you come from a university background way back when, yeah. they're scared of putting their hand up or scared of speaking up in case they can't be heard or, you know, when you have a room that has that, just that little voice lift, yes. everyone feels that they've been seen and heard at the same time without, as you say, having to identify. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really important. And so one of the things that's really driving us is how can we bring engagement back to larger spaces? Yes. And again, we talked higher ed, but this, this, you know, in a town hall, no one asks questions. In, yes. a, in a training session, people don't ask questions. Uh, in a large meeting room, it's just a really, yes. uh, there's a lot of barriers and, you know, uh, obstacles to saying what you want to say. Yes. And we know how collaboration suffers when people don't ask questions and they don't, they don't share. Now, this is the basic... Uh, grouping that you have the two uh, bars and the pod in the center. Yeah. This goes now. You were having sample different ranges um, yes. earlier on. Yeah. So then you can go four and two. It's very flexible. Yeah. 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 yeah the base. The base system is actually two bars. Yeah. With uh, with a hub. So with that would hub. be a you know maybe a, a large meeting room. Yeah. And so you got a stereo pair, all the microphones and speaker coverage that you need. Then you can add pods, one or two, yep. and the biggest, the biggest uh, kind of configuration uh, would be a four-bar, two-pod system, and that does up to 60 feet. 60 feet, that's a, like a massive, massive room right there. Yeah. To being able to, yeah. And the nice thing is, it doesn't have to be a square room. You, like, you can be putting these in any type of positioning. That's right. And I think the key point of earlier on is you were showing me the, the control system that you can actually see if there is a bit of a gap in this in the algorithms that might be a bit low. So, like, if when you are actually seating these or mounting these on the wall, yes. you know where the best position is. It's telling you in the in the control panel. It it takes away nearly the AV installer's job because yeah. Well, yeah. Again, we're we're trying to keep it simple, and I think most importantly, we want to make sure that as the room changes. Yes. One thing is getting it installed and set up, but we all know we were talking about again university classrooms. In that in that lecture hall, there's ten different things that happen throughout the day. Yes. Different preferences of instructor, different layouts. They're just yeah, the room is living and breathing and changing. So what we're really focused on get the system up on uh, on the wall, and it's very flexible where you put it. But how will it adapt to the acoustics and changing use case? And that's what we really think we deliver with the yes. HDX is this flexibility and adaptability uh, to, to audio use cases. 100%. Um, so you, you said, like, and you're looking for people, like, to over the, the course of the next six months, because you, you believe, like, this will go on, on real resale uh, in ISE time, so by February of next year. Yeah. But, like, in the meantime, people are continuously testing us to see right. you and push the limits. Like, you have some test environments as well. With, like, I was asking you, on a higher ed front, yes. how many students at like lecture theatre would you think like without it interfering or any loss of sound or quality? Like yeah. and like with a, a sixty foot room, you're talking about three or four hundred students in the room. Yeah, maybe a little less, but yeah, I mean, we're not we're not focusing on the lecture hall, the biggest yes. of your spaces. Yes. But yes. you know, you show me all your working spaces, yes. the kind of the, the 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 rooms that you're pumping most of your uh, you know instructional value through. Uh, yeah, you're talking about yeah places with 100 students, 200 students, 250 students. Could be tiered, could be flat. This is the sweet spot room that we're really looking at, and and uh, you you've been touching on it, uh, Justin. But you know uh, one of the things we're really pushing on in terms of our testing is is on voice lift, and yes. so you know voice lift is one of the hardest uh, audio challenges to solve. Of course it is, yeah, and it's yeah, one yeah. of the biggest things that people ask for. Yeah. Can I have my voice? lifted or amplify without the use yes. of a wireless microphone. Yes. And that's one of the big technical swings that we're taking with the HDX and where we absolutely are reaching out to our user community to help tune and test and like how big of a space can we do. All these things we're working through, but we're, we're very confident. In but Rob, you, you, you touch on another area and that is that this will all link in with your PTT cameras for, for tracking purposes. Right. So, um, you could have numerous cameras in the room linked in with this for Zoom rooms and be able to do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're primarily focused on the audio, yes. the audio problems, the audio use cases, but we provide API hooks to our camera ecosystem. And so there's many examples of people that have taken our sound location data, paired it with their 
kind of their visual, their their uh, their camera data to make really kind of seamless switching mm -hmm. experiences for uh, all kinds of use cases. So yeah, so we'll continue to do that. Everything we do at in our interface, every dial, every slider, every you know toggle is an API call, and yeah. uh, we're really an API first company. Now people are going to ask what. Is the is the price set now on the HDX? No. No, we're not we're not set yet on pricing. We're as you said at preview stage. We're about six months away from shipping, um, and we're getting feedback on pricing right now. Yeah, and I, I heard some because I, they they were asking me earlier on in the private room. This is going to be very competitively priced. Yeah, we think that we'll have the the best value proposition for large spaces in the market. Uh, best functionality, uh, leading uh, unique simple simplicity. And in terms of pricing, we, we will be very competitive. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, the high value is how we like to say it. For more information on how do people find out more about HDX? Yeah, so we now have our preview pages all live. On and our, a new website. Yeah, oh, I did, yeah, 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 I heard exactly. about the brand new website to t talk about yeah. the, the HDX. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so the HDX is now uh, publicly announced. Uh, the preview level of information is available on Nareva.com, so go there. Yes. And uh, yeah, you can reach out and uh, schedule a deeper dive with us and you'll you'll see a progressive reveal of the features and functionality between now and the end of the year. And you have, I, I love the fact that Nareva have free apps that, or you were recommending free apps for, yeah. for even in our rooms at, in DCU, yeah. being able to just check what way the sound is 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 bouncing off the walls. Yeah. You know? So yeah, it's great that you have all this stuff. Nareva.com, Rob, thank you very much for doing the yeah, HX model. Thank you for tuning in to All Things Techie Podcast, part of the Extreme Media Network. Follow us on Twitter at AV Tech Junkies. Subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also watch our show on YouTube by visiting youtube.com forward slash at Justin underscore or underscore Dawson. Previous episodes of our show can be found on our official site, www.allthingstech.ie. For advertising and sponsorship opportunities, please visit www.extrememedia.ie.